Okay, we're at Johnson Space Center and we are about to go see real moon rocks. But first, we have to get the camera cleaned off. So why are you cleaning it? Um, to get any kind of outside um, particles, dirt, well, you're going into a clean room. Got it, so we're going to bunny suit up? Yes, sir. And so you're putting booties on that have not been exposed to dirt or anything. So now you're in a cleaner area. Cleaner. So as we go back, yes. It gets progressively more clean? Exactly. I see. Okay. And the rooms are pressurized so that the clean air flows outward. So oh, wow. The dirty air does not, like this door is open. Air is flowing that way. Yes. This takes a while. <laughs> All right. Yes, it does. I hope I don't have to pee during this. <laughs> I you hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> so you're one of the only people in the world that get to operate with Moon Rocks on a daily basis? One of few. Uh, we have a special group here and that's our task. Daily we work with the Lunar Sound. No, no, no. You're giving me the NASA voice. <laughs> I want the Andrea voice. I don't want the NASA voice. <laughs> Down on blue. <laughs> <laughs> so every day you get to mess with Moon Rocks. Yes, every day we work with Is it pretty cool? It's a cool thing. We work with the Moon Rocks every day, a special group of people, and that's what we do. That's awesome. <laughs> that was still the NASA voice. <laughs> so, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for 39 years, and I was just one when I started working here. Yeah, <laughs> I was just 40. That's my story, and I'm still here. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is the who I want to work with here. This is good. So we're going to go into our air shower and we stay in here for one minute. Okay. And uh, it's a laminar flow. You, so that you have no idea how much. Let's clean area and a clean You have no idea how much I like laminar flow. You don't, you don't even know. I can't even explain it to you. <laughs> and you really love it. <laughs> I do. So here we go. Okay, here we go. And only Wonderful. four can go in here at a oh. time. So one, two, three. No way. So the air. That's where they are now. Is that our, is our minute up? Yes. Our microwave's done? So watch your step down. I'm watching it. Boom. Bam. Wow. All right. Uh, what's your schedule? How long are you here? I'm I'm on the moon as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I don't I don't care how long this takes. Okay. So what are we doing now? We're in our pristine sample lab. Okay. And so there were six missions that went to the moon from 1969 to 1972, bringing back 842 pounds of rocks, which is 382 kilograms. Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17, and those samples are curated here in this laboratory in these nitrogen-filled cabinets. Uh -huh. A very pure type nitrogen gas. This is Apollo 17. So I'm going to pull out the gloves. This is a neoprene glove that we use, and we cannot touch the sample with these gloves if they're unbagged. But the samples that I'm going to show you are actually bagged. And later on, I'm going to let you go into a cabinet as well, but there won't be any samples in that cabinet. Gotcha. This is Apollo 17 sample. The sample number is 76315,89. So you know that this sample has been broken at least into 89 pieces. That's how they're indexed. This is how they, yes, and this is how they're packaged for storage. Do you only touch the moon rocks with tools that you're holding with gloves, right? If the moon rocks are open, then we only touch them with uh, Teflon aluminum or stainless steel. So there would be tweezers or Teflon gloves. And this is a pair of gloves cameras. over your gloves gloves over the gloves wow exactly. that's so amazing we, you're controlling the materials that actually touch the moon rock so exactly. you said teflon stain stainless steel so even if they see that material on the sample when they're analyzing it they can just subtract it out because they know that that's what you're manipulating it with exactly. that makes sense yes. finger 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 grab make a fist grab a punch yes keep going wiggle your hand around Perfect. You got it. Get it. Got it. Okay. One more. All right. Learning how to grab and touch little rocks. All right. <laughs> there you go. We good? We're in. Okay. We're in. You pull that tray really over there. You see the one with the top on it? Oh my goodness. Pull there's, it toward you. There's no way I can get to that. Reach. Okay. Got it. There's no such thing as I can't. Excellent. Okay. Take the lid off and set it on the floor. I, me and you can hang out. Okay. <laughs> there's a black pedal on the floor. Push down the black pedal. And look, it's going to go to zero. Take your foot up. Oh, you just got you it. You teared it out. Now put one of those weights gently on the balance. This is a super balance, isn't it? Gently on the balance. Mm -hmm. You break it, keep on it. I'm not going to break it. Okay, that's actually a 100 gram weight. Wow, down to the microgram. 
and the 100 gram no, wood actually me. weighs 99.999974, but we have a plus and minus tolerance, so it's within the range. I see. If it was not within the range, then we would have to stop right now, get a technician to tweak the balance before we can go any further. Good grief. So uncertainty and accuracy is important. super important. This lab serves as a kind of staging area. NASA uses it to provide lunar material to academia for study but the lab itself is supplied by the vault. When you walk into this room and you know that it contains some of the most precious material on Earth, it's an absolutely surreal experience. This is it? This is a pristine sample vault, and all the samples are actually still stored in nitrogen cabinets, also by mission. If you look up there, you can see the mission just like, also by mission just like that. What is this? Apollo 11, the first mission. This is Apollo 11? The first mission. These are the samples, all the samples that were brought back from the poly Is it still awesome for you? It's awesome, yes. So all the moon rocks in the entire world, the major moon rocks, all of them are in this room? Yes, starting with the poly 11 over in the corner. Yeah. That's Apollo 12. These are 14, 15, 16, and 17. That's crazy. So why don't we have it in multiple locations? Like why aren't, why aren't half of them in a mountain in Colorado? There is another remote facility that we have just in case Johnson Space Center was destroyed. We have 15% uh, of the samples stored in a remote location for storage. Somewhere else is all you're going to tell me. Got it. That's it's all. Nice car remote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Each one of them have a security seal on there, which means that we have inventoried every sample in those cabinets, and we know our database has every sample, every container number, every sample weight, and sample description in there for everything that's in it. Wow, that's crazy. So do you have a, a, a photographic index of all these? Yes, we do. You do? Yes. Wow. And so that's how you go through and select what you want. You know the, exactly. the composition? Yes. You have a description of everything. All the rocks were described. This is an open tray because there's no seal on it. I see. Is that heavy? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there are Apollo 15 samples. That's an actual rock right there? Yes, it is. And the number is 15499,179. So it lets you know it's been broken at least 179. So times. it was a big, much bigger rock yes. when you first got it? Yes. That's amazing. That is pretty interesting. So how, is it a big deal when you get to chip a big rock? Yes, it is. And, and actually, you're going to see that process when we go back into the lab. Really? You see a large sample that's being worked on. Oh, that's awesome. When they brought them off the moon, did they have them in nitrogen or anything on the way back? They were in bags. They were not in nitrogen. They were sealed in bags. Oh, I see. And different, and yes. Rock boxes. Gotcha. Judy's bags for the moon. They took two rock boxes on every mission. Really? Out of a single piece of aluminum alloy, 775, we had triple gaskets. Those were to be closed on the moon in vacuum and remain a vacuum, and for Apollo 11 and 12, they were opened in vacuum. No way. In my head, it's like they got inside the ascent module and just like threw rocks on the floor. I know that's not how it happened, but in my head, you know, it's like your pickup truck and you just throw <laughs> Some were sealed in vacuum boxes on the surface of the moon and they weren't opened until they were opened here. I don't know why I've never thought about this, but you can't just pick up a rock on the moon, throw it in the lander, and bring it back to Earth. Because by the time you get in the lander, the oxygenated environment in the lander is going to change the chemical composition of the rock as it oxidizes, right? So how do you get a rock back to Earth without Earth in the atmosphere contaminating it? The answer is a super fancy box. They could put it in there, in bags of course, and then they could seal it up and get it all the way back to Earth in a vacuum so it could still be studied today with the same chemical composition as it had on the moon. We know there's uh, a lot of scientists from uh, a number of countries standing by to see the lunar samples and uh, we thought you'd be interested in seeing that they really are here. Um, these two boxes are the sample return containers. They, they are vacuum packed uh, containers that were closed in a vacuum on the lunar surface, sealed, and then uh, brought inside the lab and put inside uh, these fiberglass bags 
zippered and resealed around the outside, around the outside, and placed in these uh, receptacles in the side of the command module. I found a really cool report from NASA that explained how they processed the moon rocks from Apollo 11 and 12 in a vacuum. Turns out this was an incredibly difficult ordeal to figure out. According to this report, they had to basically make a reverse spacesuit, the arms and everything. They developed special storage containers, tweezers, all kinds of things. But in the end, the report said that it made more sense to process the lunar material under atmospheric pressure using dry nitrogen. We had a vacuum blood box. It was not easy to maintain. You know, if you got any kind of leak, you got stuff from outside, inside. And if you notice, these are all positive pressure problems. It keeps the locks clean. We went back to the lab and I got to witness Sharice in the process of preparing a large moon rock for a scientist. The team explained to me how they got their tools into the glove box without contaminating the samples. Everything that enters the presence of the moon rocks has to be cleaned via a special procedure. Think about it. Tools, nameplates, bags. If any of these items are dirty, they can become a source of contamination. If it goes into that cabinet with the rocks, it better be clean. Every tool, every nameplate, everything that's used to process the rocks is cleaned to an insane specification and then it's triple bagged. These bags are then removed in succession as the tools get closer and closer to the moon rocks to avoid contamination at every step. For example, here you can see me putting on a second set of gloves just to touch the second bag before placing this chipping bowl into the airlock. So I'm just going to turn this up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What flow rate do you want? Just go to 100. 100 is good at this. Then you go purge for five minutes. Five minute purge? Uh -huh. And so that's purging the airlock, which is there, which is where I put the tools. Exactly. And you're going to reach in and get the, the tools, or she's going to do that. She's going to do it when she comes in. She's going to turn the airlock off. Okay. The flow, and then she's going to reach in and pull in the tools. What are these and I'm looking at? Data packs, which is the history of every, every, this is what NASA tells us to do. We get curator orders to tell you exactly what to do. And this was done in 1985. Okay, now these, of course, are. And the first thing I told you we had to do was weigh the rock to make sure that the rock is within tolerance. So I did this back in 1985. Did you really? You're not that old. I know. I know. Somebody forged it. Who <laughs> <laughs> <Get> that? <laughs> and this is the first thing you do. Okay. You take a picture of the rock from the whatever side you, this is the bottom face. Then you walk to the other side and you take the top face. That's why you want the saw to go right there and it's gonna come out right there. What kind of saw do you use? Bend saw. It's, a, it's an old Hobart meat cutter that was modified. So it has a diamond edge blade so that no oil solution is used because that will contaminate the surface of the sample. So we'll show it to you. It's right over in the other room. Cool. So, yeah. so you saw it? Yes. And as you're sawing, every time a piece breaks off, you have to stop and take a picture. Now 15459 comma zero is the parent. Okay. Comma zero is the parent of every rock. But every time a piece breaks off, you take a picture and give it a number. Wow. Because as you're going through, see how those pieces are breaking? I, oh, so right here, so you got the little you pieces. You got a whole bunch of pieces breaking off. You got to put it back together. Oh my goodness. It's like a puzzle. And then you also have to figure out you the... You have to know every number for it. Really? Absolutely. Because see if you got this little white piece off that number 254. Right years ago and now you want to do the studies of the same thing and somebody has used it up, you could actually come and find the other part that's on 252 right there of the same mineral. Good gracious. Analysis. So you have to know where every sample came from. We know if a rock has been broken up into 2,000 pieces, literally from looking at the pictures you could know exactly how to put it back together and what all the pieces came from. Take just a second to think about how complex this problem is. Every single angle is photographed, some parts even down to the microscopic level, so you can put the entire rock back together with nothing but photographs and paperwork. One thing you'll see in most of these photos of the moon rocks are these little cubes off to the side that I like to call letter dice. The cube, north, south, east, west, top, bottom, you see the cubes that's in there? The astronauts took pictures of the sample on the moon and gave them orientation. We keep that orientation. If we break and flip the rock, we flip the cube so that we'll know exactly where the sample was positioned in respect to the location on the moon. And I'm going to show you a picture of that in a few minutes. I would have we're never, really I would have never thought to think about how important it was. It's the very important yeah. because uh, you want to know if it was exposed to 
cosmic rays, solar wind, whatever. What was the depth? Was it sitting on the surface of the moon? Was it buried underneath something? All of that is important in the research that this uh, PIs are doing. These are not letter dice, <laughs> which if you say letter dice, people will make fun of you, won't they? They're orientation cubes. Orientation cubes? Uh, I, yeah, I'm glad I know that now. Okay, <laughs> what, what do we have? What are the letters? So, you know, north, south, East and west, and then top and bottom. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Letter dice. <laughs> You've forgotten more about the moon than most people will ever know, haven't you? And I have forgotten. It. <laughs> it's amazing. And this is a Poly 11 soil sample. Really? And you can hold this. I can hold it? Mm -hmm. I would love to hold that. It's a Poly 11 sample. What's the number? 10071 comma 11 Correct. but hold on there there's you said it's broken apart yeah this is comma 11 off of so there's a comma 12 there's a comma 15 there's a comma 100 but this is once it gets this number comma so there was 11. a sample and you just took some out and that's those yes together are the sample exactly mm -hmm. that's amazing this is a return sample so it actually have gone out of sight they did their studies and analysis. It could have been one piece when they got it, and now it came back broken up to these pieces. But they still have to return the sample. It doesn't belong. Andrea, to let me hold they it. still have to. <laughs> it's in a bag. I don't care. I got to hold it. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you for all your time, all right. ladies. It was amazing. I appreciate that.